welcome to episode two of my create modded playthrough. My name is Blindside. So basically in this first part here I've edited together a bunch of clips regarding to me doing a bit of mining because you've got to get some resources. Now I won't talk your ear off since I'll let you enjoy the montage I've created. But basically I'm looking for iron, copper, zinc, andesite to make the andesite alloy which you'll see later on in the video and any other resources I come across. Sadly, no diamonds. However, a fair amount of redstone. So enjoy the montage. Now that we've done the mining session for this episode, I hope I don't have to go back down there apart from when I go hunting for some blue shiny rocks. Otherwise, at the moment, I'm just simply crafting the components that you need for starting Create. So you could either use the water wheel or the windmill to start really for your first power source. Normally I do the water wheel. However, this time I thought I would try starting out the windmill as it has more stress capacity, which basically means I can attach more things to it, running it at a higher speed before things stop working. So that's why I'm just getting some wool from the sheep because you've got to have some sails on your one block windmill.
what you see me here putting down is the mechanical press, which is basically the first machine that you really need to make as many of the other recipes require stuff like iron plate, which is what this provides. Now, I know you see me having an anvil beneath it. However, that's just an aesthetic choice. You don't actually need the anvil there. You can have a block of dirt beneath it. As long as there's one air block between the press and the ground, it will work just fine. As well as it doesn't require a minimum speed to work, unlike some other machines down the line that you'll see me use. That I have to have like say minimum 16 or 32 revolutions per minute to actually have them work. The press will work no matter how fast or slow you set it. So what you're seeing me do here is um, gear up from the windmill. As the windmill is very slow, naturally as you'd expect. So when one big gear goes to a little gear, that little gear goes at twice the speed as the big gear. So you stack that a couple times to get a much faster rotation. However, I didn't anticipate how slow a windmill actually is. A water wheel turns much faster. So uh, slow and steady wins the race, as they say. Providing I can actually get my iron ingots on this anvil, which doesn't have a full block surface. But there you are, the very first um, machine in action from Create. So what I've made here is a gearbox, and I switched it from a horizontal gearbox to a vertical gearbox. It basically just means that the shaft comes down at the bottom. And the main purpose for this is so I can have a small gear connect at the bottom, since I have a grindstone that takes a gear input and not a shaft input. As you can see here and this will be the first steps to getting some ore duplication well it's not actually ore duplication since it's all chance based and all I'm going to be doing is crushing the ores and so what washing does it gives me 10 nuggets guaranteed with a small chance to get some additional nuggets and at this early stage of the game any small bonus is worth its weight in gold So what I just placed down is the fan, which can be used to push mobs and items. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a water source block in front of the fan. And then next to that, I'm going to have a platform where I can throw down items that want to get washed. So stuff like gravel will be washed down and that's how you can make iron nuggets for an infinite iron farm, as well as it'll make flint. So you're going to have to avoid that. But here you can see me throwing down the bits of crushed iron ore to getting iron nuggets. And this works for the other ores as long as it doesn't need to be fortuned. So at this point it's just crafting the nuggets into the ingot form, which later on will definitely automate the process and it'll look so cool doing it. Because you can have the press with a basin beneath it, 
if you get nine nuggets it will naturally just crush it down into an ingot and then subsequently if you have nine ingots it will crush it down into a block but otherwise this is the first steps of automation for me getting some hoppers so it will automatically put the ores in and pull the uh, crushed ores out Now, I know that my front porch has become something truly messy when I have to duck under my door frame to get in. It won't be like this forever, it's just until I get the basic resources. So later on, once we get access to the crushing wheels, we'll actually be able to get much better ore doubling. Now what I realized is that um, I don't have any sand and I'm going to need some since I'm going to set up my villager breeding stations and the block recipes just require glass panes. Now be careful, there are caves underneath the seams with floating sand and when I updated the block it went under. Oh I love vein miner, it's just such a good time saver. In preparation for my project of carving a pathway through this forest of trees, I thought I would uh, test the theory and see how well it's going to work with these massive 3x3 three three trees by using the saw and the hand crake from Create. It works really well, however it does take your hunger, so we'll fix that later with an automated contraption. but it was definitely a very long tree when the tree fell and part of it was in the water.
Now I thought I'd try to see if I can grow 3x3s on my own. However, the tree only grew on a 2x2, which was a bit disappointing. Still a very tall tree, just not as much wood as what I was hoping to get out of it. Otherwise what you see me here is throwing the last of my copper and iron ore and having that um, get washed into the nugget form. And that marks the last of the resources that I mined from underground. Side by side you can see the um, darkwood tree compared to this redwood tree. The size is just not comparable. Here is another opportunity to use create to chop this tree down as I find it very satisfying, as long as you place the saw the right way. Now that we've given the sand some time to smelt into glass blocks, we can make the villager breeder as well as the villager converter and a sort of daycare for the baby villagers until they grow up. All in useful block form, but the villagers are not going to get my nice turquoise bed, that one's mine. The only downside about where I have put them in my bedroom is that they still make their sounds, which are annoying. So I'm most likely going to move them out into their own little area, where I'm not going to hear them unless I am out there. I think it would drive anyone nuts to listen to the villager sounds while they try to go to bed. So in preparation for breeding up my villagers, since they do require food, just like if I wasn't using this mod, I'm going to grind up all my wheat.
Since I wasn't lucky enough to find any diamonds on the ground, I can't make myself a pickaxe, which means no mining obsidian. However, there's always another way when you want to get to the nether. And for me, that is a bunch of ceramic buckets that will break after I put lava in them. So I get a one-time use, but I can just construct another portal one block of lava and bucket of water at a time, just like speedrunners do it.
And with that, we've now got a portal to the nether, with no diamond pickaxe in sight. Now it's not a bad location to spawn in, I've definitely had better and I've had way worse. Otherwise I'm going to quickly cover up my portals so I'm not seen coming through it, because it would be really inconvenient to have a gas blow it up, and I forgot to bring cobblestone with me. This will be the end of this video, but not the end of the series. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.